Um, thanks, Emma. Um, so, um, I'm Barney Whitespanner, um, and really the, the talk will focus on Iraq in 2008 and the Allied operation, not just British, primarily British, but obviously there were many, um, many other nationalities represented. Um, what I'm just going to do there, Hugo is going to talk about that in detail, I'm just going to try and put this, the military aspect of this into some sort of broader context, um, literally for about five minutes just as we, um, just as we start. And throughout um, my career, um, I, having left the army, I've um, served in many places in the world where um, this issue of, 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 of the importance of the protection of cultural sites has gradually, gradually come more and more into preeminence. Um, I think, just to put the debate in, into context, I think there has sort of been a, a, a link in people's mind of um, so, 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 so some sort of uh, idea that um, the military and lack of cultural awareness go together, that um, the idea of a sort of soldier as a vandal. Um, there was no smoke without fire, um, although I would say, of course, I think that's an unfair portrayal, certainly of the British Army um, throughout its history, uh, and its many imperial offshoots, particularly the, 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 the Indian Army, the British Army in India, um, who were responsible for many um, actually very important cultural projects. Of course, at the time, actually, the idea of being a soldier was looser than it is now. You came in and out of an army um, in a way that now that um, definition, delineation, if you like, is more, is more absolute. But, of course, armies reflect um, the societies that, um, that produce them, um, that, um, that pay for them. Um, and if we look now at what the, what I say, Western armies, right, what the, the, the British army and the American armies um, are trying to achieve, um, that is very much um, a degree of stability and normality. Now, you may disagree with their methods. You may disagree with their motives. Um, but there is, um, there is little advantage to, 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 to any responsible army, and I say that obviously putting an organization like ISIS clearly into the irresponsible um, category, um, in actually damaging the, the infrastructure, damaging the society, the components of a society which it's gone in to help. Um, so if that's what armies are about, um, then they've come to realize that any sort of destruction um, of, that, of that structure, be it economic, be it social, social um, be it cultural, um, must be the absolute minimal um, required to, to save life, to, to achieve what they're trying to do. And I think that lesson goes back to, um, to Belgrade. Um, I think it goes back to um, the bombing of, of um, the former, um, of, of, of former Yugoslavia, um, which really came as an enormous shock um, to, to Europe as a whole. I mean, this was really the first time something like, like this had happened um, since the last World War, when, of course, there was um, the, the fairly hideous carpet bombing of large parts of, of northern Europe. Um, and I, I, I think it, it was really that, that which was the genesis of a lot of uh, the thinking um, and the way that the militaries have developed since. And one of the things that has happened, of course, is that the, 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 the trend in developing, in developing weapons um, has now been to make bombs, guns, whatever, um, increasingly, increasingly accurate. The old idea of sort of mass destruction that, um, that, as I say, was the sort of legacy of 1945 is now something which is um, completely and, and totally unacceptable um, to, to of, of, obviously, I say, not, not perhaps to, to, to ISIS. What you see now in militaries is very sophisticated targeting staffs. You see people whose job it is to pour in enormous detail, aided hugely by modern surveillance techniques, over where a, a, a weapon is to be deployed and to make certain that the damage it causes is entirely proportional. Um, but you could say, okay, that's fine. Um, it's not enough, though, just to avoid damage. Um, the debate has now moved on to actual protection. Um, and I think it's true to say that um, everybody feels a sense of failure, armies particularly, when you see pictures like Bamiyan. I was actually in Afghanistan um, just after that. Um, went up to, um, to, to see those, those sad sites, having seen them actually as a student some years before. Um, and again, it comes back to my point that if you can't protect the cultural heritage of a country, if the cultural heritage of a country is destroyed, then maybe there was some sort of sense of failure for what the military is um, trying to do. However, I've obviously got to qualify that comment. You can only protect if you're in a position to do so. 
and it may, that may inevitably have to lead to prioritization. I mean, obviously, there's no, no, no way that um, some of the monuments in Syria can, can, can be protected um, by the means people have got at their disposal at, at the moment. Um, now, all this came home to us in, in Iraq, um, and really, um, there were two issues. That of the destruction of the Basra Museum, obviously the Baghdad Museum, which is a, a separate issue, which I'm likely to come back to um, again, if, if you like. But as the British army went into, um, into Iraq, the Basra Museum um, was, were, 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 was looted and was badly looted. Um, and at the same time, there was um, widespread international fear that some of the other very important cultural sites in southern Iraq uh, were, 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 were being looted and being destroyed. Now, there was no, there was no intent here. Nobody sat down in mean, the British headquarters or the Allied headquarters and said, oh, let's not bother about the, the Basra Museum. Um, nobody said, let's not bother about uh, or, um or anywhere else. Um, but on the other hand, what they did do is sit down and say, let's bother hugely about the water treatment plants. Let's bother about the electricity plants. Let's bother about Umkasa port. Um, so why didn't they at the same time, why didn't they at the same time say, well, let's bother about, about Basra um, Museum? Why didn't we put it into that same, into that same context? Um, and that is exactly what we have tried now to do. And that is what we now have military staffs who are dedicated to in actually putting cultural sites into the same, into the sa into the same context. There has, of course, got to, does emphasize some element of military prioritization. You've got to have enough people to do this, and obviously saving life is, um, in, 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 obviously has to, has to come first. But to go back to, to Basra, um, the, before I went out, um, I went to see John Curtis um, and Neil McGregor in the British Museum, actually with um, Charles Moore, who was then editor of a Telegraph, who's a very old friend of mine. Um, and what we were looking to do was, first of all, to, 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 to repair the damage, or psychological damage, to repair the reputational damage as well, I'll be honest about that, um, as well as the physical damage. Um, but also, because I knew we were coming towards the end of what had been a very difficult as, um, operation, as well, not escaped your notice, um, and there is actually a very long um, and strong friendly association between the British and, and the Basraris. I mean, obviously, Basra has been relying on British trade for much longer than us being there in the, in, in, in the 21st century. Uh, the, it's, and, and there is a, a, a very strong British link, and, and always has been. And we also wanted something to actually, we didn't want to leave on, 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 on such a bad note. Um, and, and for people to say, well, you didn't bother um, about something like museum, which, uh, which encapsulates, encapsulates so much of Iraqi culture. And it's um, that project which Hugo will now talk about. <laughs>